Today, we're going to discuss Apigenin. Now, it's a relatively new supplement, and it first came under my radar a couple of years ago, so I've had more than enough time to evaluate and research this remarkable compound. And now, I'm going to reveal my findings. Now, as you're probably aware, Apigenin has already been reviewed by several other channels, and most have focused entirely on its NAD boosting effects. Now, those same effects will be under discussion here, but we'll also be taking a look at several other benefits that have been generally overlooked including apigenin's anti-cancer, anti-diabetic, neuroprotective, hormone, sleep, hair growth, anxiety, sirtuin modulating, and general disease preventing properties. And of course, we'll also be discussing dosages, any potential side effects, and my recommended apigenin products. Now I have compressed the length and detail of this presentation from that originally planned, but only to provide a less time consuming and easy to follow format. However, if you're interested, a complete list of links to many of the study sources referenced in the making of this review can be found in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get notified of all new anti-aging and life extension content that's coming up. Apigenin is a bioflavonoid compound, or more specifically a flavone, and it's nicely present in a wide variety of plants and herbs, with two of the most popular and abundant sources being parsley and chamomile tea. In fact, dried parsley is the highest apigenin content of all foods at 45 mg per gram. Now, pure apigenin, well, it's a pale yellow-brown crystalline powder, which by itself has a low molecular weight, a very high melting point, and is very insoluble in water. However, foodborne apigenin, or apigenin 7-O-glucoside to be specific, has increased water solubility via its carbohydrate-containing bond and is relatively stable in comparison to comicular apigenin. Now, for the reasons we've just discussed, it's absolutely essential that the apigenin supplement you purchase is bound to a glucose molecule. If in doubt, then always check with the manufacturer or reseller. You want to ask if the apigenin is bound to beta-glucosides, is extracted from nature, and is fully stabilized. If you can't be sure that this criteria has been satisfied, then simply look elsewhere. Apigenin works through several different pathways in the body, some of which have been identified and confirmed, while others still remain unclear. But perhaps apigenin's most studied pathway is its ability to increase NAD levels by inhibiting CD38, which is a multifunctional enzyme that metabolizes and mediates NAD+. We'll be discussing this remarkable NAD boosting effect in more detail shortly, as well as looking at what NAD plus actually is and why it's so important to health and longevity. Now, research has also consistently and reliably shown that apigenin has numerous molecular targets involved in inflammation. And it's these powerful anti-inflammatory properties, as well as apigenin's role as an antioxidant, antitoxicant, antibacterial, antiparasitic, antiviral, and antifungal agent that are responsible for several of the benefits that we're going to discuss next. NAD plus is a vital coenzyme found in every cell in the body, and it's critical to hundreds of metabolic processes, and so is vital to maintaining good health. In fact, without it, we die in a matter of seconds. NAD plus helps convert food to energy, plays a crucial role in maintaining DNA integrity and ensures proper cell function, which in turn protects our bodies from aging and disease. Now you've undoubtedly heard of sirtuins, which are important epigenetic modulators closely linked to healthy aging and longevity. In fact, they're often termed our longevity genes, and crucially, they require a constant supply of NAD plus in order to regulate metabolism, maintain stable chromosomes, and repair damaged DNA. Unfortunately, however, NAD plus levels decline significantly with advancing age. But fortunately, there are several compounds available that can regulate cellular NAD plus levels and consequently modulate sirtuins. The most commonly used of these compounds are precursors of NAD plus, and the most effective available are NR and NMN. When you take an NMN supplement, for example, it's first synthesized in the body. Then the molecules enter the nicotinamide core recycling pathway, where the enzyme NMNAT then converts NMN to NAD+. NR supplements do the very same, but they first must be converted to NMN in the body by the enzyme NRK. And in case you're wondering, well, why not just take a NAD plus supplement? Well, unfortunately, this has actually been found to have very little effect on increasing NAD plus levels in the body. 
However, we have yet another class of supplement that does. Apigenin is a highly effective alternative to the NAD plus precursors and it exerts its NAD boosting effects through a totally different pathway. It functions to boost NAD plus levels by inhibiting the enzyme CD38. Now CD38 is classified as a NAD ACE, which is simply an enzymatic process that degrades NAD plus levels. And unfortunately for us, CD38 expression increases significantly as we age, with the resultant hit on our natural NAD levels. Now, although we do indeed need CD38, what we definitely do not want are elevated levels of it, and that's where apigenin is our savior. Just by keeping CD38 expression in check, apigenin supplementation can come pretty close to maintaining our normal ND plus levels. And in a younger individual, say someone under 40 years of age, it may well be all that's required to maintain those highly desirable, youthful NAD plus levels. If you're already taking an NAD precursor, such as NR or NMN, as indeed I do, then it's important that you're also taking apigenin concurrently. Otherwise, your NAD precursor supplement will be somewhat degraded by your elevated CD38 levels. And of course, the older we are, the higher those CD38 levels will be and less kept in check by apigenin. Apigenin's sleep and relaxation benefits are both well known and well studied. These benefits are due to apigenin's ability to reduce feelings of anxiety and increase feelings of sedation. The intensity of these effects are dose dependent and can be attributed in part to apigenin's ability to reduce cortisol levels. Now, if you've ever found yourself stressed out close to bedtime, then you'll have experienced the resultant increase in cortisol output and a corresponding inability to sleep. Now, as we know, cortisol levels decrease markedly in the evening with a corresponding increase in melatonin levels, all part of a natural process that prepares us for rejuvenating sleep. And conversely, from early morning onwards, cortisol levels increase as melatonin levels naturally decrease. It should come as no surprise then that one of the functions of NAD plus is its involvement in regulating our circadian rhythm, which of course controls our body's sleep-wake cycle. All this mounting evidence makes it easy to see then why apigenin might be an ideal supplement to experiment with where chronic or occasional stress-related sleep issues exist especially as randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trials have consistently found apigenin to reduce feelings of anxiety in those suffering with anxiety disorders. If you decide to try apigenin for sleep-related issues, then be sure to take it in the evening, preferably an hour or two before bed, and always with a source of fat in order to optimize assimilation. But more on that when we get to the dosage recommendations later in the presentation. Personally, I find apigenin's anti-anxiety and sedation effects to be extremely mild, even at very high dosages. Taking it a step further, you may want to consider apigenin in combination with melatonin or even a natural herbal supplement such as valerian root. I personally have a nightly fail-safe sleep combo where I use apigenin, melatonin and Do Not Age's Sure Sleep product, which contains three very powerful natural health ingredients, including valerian root, sour cherry and rhodiola rosea. I'll be doing a full review on that amazing supplement in an upcoming video, so make sure that you subscribe to the channel if that one sounds interesting to you. Apigenin exerts cancer protective effects through several different pathways, with sirtuin modulation undoubtedly a major factor involved here. And we have several study-backed in vivo effects, including apoptosis, that being apigenin's ability to selectively induce the programmed death of cancer cells. Additionally, angiogenesis has also been shown to take place, which is the suppressed development of new blood vessels in cancer tumors. Now that's two pretty impressive cancer effective pathways right there. It's those pathways, together with cancer cell cycle inhibition, increased liver detoxification, anti-immunogenic properties, plus apigenin's free radical scavenging and anti-inflammatory characteristics that provide very worthwhile benefits to anyone looking to reduce the risk of various cancers as we age. There's also increasing evidence demonstrating that apigenin may well function as a chemosensitizer, and it's already shown excellent potential for overcoming chemoresistance in pancreatic cancer. But that's only a very basic summary regarding how apigenin exerts its cancer protective effects. There really is so much more that we could discuss here. And if you'd like to know more, then I suggest taking a browse through the studies referenced in the video description. 
During the course of male aging, circulating levels of the hormone testosterone can decline markedly. This results in decreased muscle mass, bone density, sex drive, and other physiological functions. Studies have found that apigenin may contribute to increased testosterone production from testicular Leydig cells, and it may achieve this by blocking signals from testosterone-repressing proteins. Apigenin is in fact a natural aromatase inhibitor, which means that it reduces the conversion rate of testosterone into estrogen, thereby leaving more bioavailable testosterone in the bloodstream. For some time now, in fact, apigenin has been used by drug-free bodybuilders in an attempt to naturally increase testosterone levels, thereby benefiting muscle mass, strength, and energy levels. Although I would point out that any increase in testosterone, although measurable by lab testing, will in fact be tiny and comes with zero risk of side effects. In reality, it's simply a case that the more little things we can do to benefit our aging physicality, the greater the likelihood of maintaining a youthful appearance in later life. And lastly, before moving on, I'd just like to mention a rodent study that I came across, which found apigenin to enhance skeletal muscle hypertrophy by regulating the PRMT7 gene. And if you're interested, you can find a link to that study in the video description. Studies indicate that apigenin shows promise as an effective therapeutic against a chronic neuroinflammation experienced in Alzheimer's disease. The inflammatory response in Alzheimer's is in reality a double-edged sword. At first, it's simply the brain's self-defense reaction aimed at eliminating harm from stimuli and restoring tissue integrity. However, this defense mechanism becomes problematic when the neuroinflammation turns chronic. Apigenin crosses the blood-brain barrier where its potent anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties have inhibitory effects on the release of several pro-inflammatory mediators. Apigenin has also been found to help clear toxic waste from the brain, including beta-amyloid plaques, a buildup of which is a symptom of Alzheimer's. Although more recently, after some fake study data was uncovered, it has been brought into question whether or not these plaques actually are a cause of the disease. Interestingly, leading back to the previous hormonal pathway that we discussed, studies also suggest that low blood testosterone has been identified as a possible risk factor for the development of Alzheimer's disease. Studies have found that apigenin stimulates hair growth through downregulation of the TGF beta 1 gene. TGF beta 1, derived from dermal papilla cells, is a catagen inducer that mediates hair growth suppression in androgenic alopecia. Now put simply, TGF beta 1 causes hair to stop growing. So by reducing this expression in the scalp, we can increase the growth phase of each hair, thereby reducing hair loss. And interestingly, the popular supplement curcumin has also been found to be a TGF beta 1 inhibitor. Now I'll be doing a hair loss video soon that will cover all the supplements, pharmaceuticals and dietary strategies that can be employed in order to eradicate hair loss. So be sure to subscribe if you want to be notified of that one. Based on mounting in vitro and in vivo evidence, it's clear that apigenin could potentially play a role in the prevention and treatment of several emerging global health issues. I'm not going to go into any detail here other than to offer a brief list of apigenin's study-based disease prevention potential. Data indicates apigenin has the potential to help prevent cancer, Alzheimer's, heart disease, fatty liver disease, sarcopenia, diabetes, obesity, depression, and multiple inflammatory disorders. Check out the link study data in the video description if you'd like to learn more. In my opinion, apigenin is an essential base supplement that should be part of any well thought out health and longevity stack. Even if you're currently taking an NAD precursor, apigenin is still a worthy addition. Not only for the additional increase in NAD plus levels that will result, but also from the host of other benefits that apigenin brings to the table. Please note that the following dosages are based on the latest research data and my personal experience using the compound. These adult dosage guidelines are for information purposes only and in no way should be considered as medical advice of any kind. If you're using apigenin for its NAD plus boosting effects, then between 500 mg to 750 mg should provide optimal results. I suggest always taking your apigenin dosage in the evening, and if you're also using an NAD precursor such as NMN or NR, then take your precursor in the morning on an empty stomach. I personally feel that in most cases, there is little need to supplement with apigenin if under 30 years of age. 
For NAD boosting CD38 suppression, I would suggest the following dosages to be a sensible guide. From 30 to 59 years of age, take 500 milligrams daily. And from 60 years of age upwards, take 750 milligrams daily. I must also mention that it's highly important that you take your apigenin with a source of fat, or it will not be properly assimilated, and you'll simply be wasting your money. I'm 62 years of age, weigh a lean 85 kilograms, and I'm taking apigenin primarily for its CD38 effects. I take 750 milligrams in a single dose each and every evening at 10 p.m. And I take it with a light supper consisting of a protein shake and a handful of walnuts. First thing upon waking at 7 a.m., I then take one gram of NMN on an empty stomach with a glass of water. Or if I happen to be using NR, I take one gram of that instead. For those looking to achieve anti-anxiety effects or mild sedative effects to aid restful sleep, I can tell you that in my experience, the required dosage can vary considerably from individual to individual. I'm not going to make any dosage suggestions here other than to say that incrementally dosed self-experimentation is, in my opinion, the best way to go. Apigenin is a natural compound, is generally considered safe, and no toxicity has yet been reported. Nonetheless, as we've already discussed, at very high dosages it can trigger muscle relaxation and mild sedation. If you do experience any negative effects, then of course cease taking it immediately and seek medical advice. And as always, if you're pregnant or have been diagnosed with a medical condition, then consult with your doctor before taking apigenin or indeed any new health supplement. As with all supplements, price, quality and dosage per capsule can vary considerably. Now my personal criteria when seeking out a new health supplement is always quality first above all else. The main problem I came across when looking for a high quality epigenin supplement was finding a product that was dosed highly enough for my needs. Most of the capsules available were dosed at only 50 milligrams or less, which would have meant me taking 15 capsules every evening. I'm currently taking Do Not Age's 250 milligram product, which means I can meet my evening dosage requirement with only three capsules. And they're also filler free, so there's only pure apigenin in there and nothing else. Now, Do Not Age has very kindly provided a 10% discount code to viewers of this video, and it'll work with any product in their range. Finding filler free supplement capsules appears to be a big problem these days. And unless you're prepared to use pure powder products, then you'll find that nearly every brand out there uses fillers and fluorogens in their supplement capsules. This is one reason why I prefer Do Not Age products. Another exception though is Paradise Herbs, whose products I've previously mentioned in this channel, but unfortunately they don't offer an apigenin product in their supplement range. So at the moment I'm only recommending the independently lab tested Do Not Age apigenin as the one to buy. And by the way it's available in 60 or 366 capsule packs. And lastly, if you decide to opt for a powder product, depending on the plant source that the apigenin was extracted from, it should generally be a pale brown or even slightly yellowish colour. Worryingly, I received one apigenin powder product for testing that was pure white. So beware and be aware. Many thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this presentation, then perhaps you'd like to subscribe to the channel. You'll have my instant love and gratitude, plus you'll be notified of all future uploads. And lastly, as always, Take care, be healthy, and see you all again soon.